Hi there. I'm here to talk about the who, what, when, where, why, and how of remote work. Now, I've been pushing this remote work rock uphill for over 17 years, and it now feels like I'm Wiley Coyote <laughs> running down the other side of the hill. Our work is informed by a proprietary library of over 6,000 studies that we've collected over that almost two decades, everything we could put our, our uh, eyeballs on that has to do with workplace. And also the clients that we're working with on the left-hand side here uh, have allowed us to, to get a lot of insight into what's going on. So I intend to do sort of the cliff notes of all of that in the next nine or 10 minutes. We've been doing a lot of board presentations about the future of not just the where of work, because we know that's changing, but the who, what, when, where, why, and how as well. And I'm going to use the same framework here, but only focus on the remote and hybrid work aspects. I'm going to start with who. A uh, PwC study in January uh, showed that remote work has been largely successful. And it was kind of a surprise. I mean, even early on in the pandemic, we were seeing that people were saying it was very successful. More than half of the people that were doing it had never done it before with any regularity. Uh, so it's it's been successful. Uh, employers agree uh, with the employees. And I could have shown a dozen other studies here because they're all saying the same thing. They also largely agree on productivity. Uh, this one, again, from uh, PwC was taken in June and then December. And you can see that the uh, productivity uh, actually goes up. Uh, this is just people reporting they were more productive. Uh, typically, we see about the same number, about the same percentage that say they were equally productive and a very small percent that say they were less productive. This is, again, nothing new. Uh, this is something that we have seen uh, in our uh, last decades of, of, of work. Part of the reason people are more productive is there are a few interruptions. Uh, research that we've done shows that uh, they lose 35 minutes a day less uh, when they're working at home. And that was during the early days of the pandemic with all of the cacophony that was going on and, and all of the uh, learning curve. And they also uh, are more productive because they work more. Uh, they tend to give back about half the time that they would have otherwise spent commuting. And overwork can be a real problem with remote work, something we need to pay attention to. Managers also say that uh, they feel that their re direct reports have been more productive during the um, pandemic and uh, relatively few, only 16% they've been say they've been less productive. Parents are struggling. Uh, there are, are, are some other groups that are struggling, but parents in particular with uh, young children at home, we have to remember this has not been normal remote work. The, um, the, having your children at home, having to homeschool, having to, to fight for bandwidth at home, having to have your spouse there and your dogs barking and everything else. Uh, you know, this was all new. Uh, and this is not something that you would normally have when uh, you're working remotely. But women, unfortunately, are, are bearing the brunt of it. McKinsey data shows that women are 1.5 times more likely to, to say that they've had challenges during the lockdown and three times more likely to uh, say that they have mental health challenges. People who don't have a dedicated space also accounts for uh, some of the, the differences in who, who would prefer to work from home in the future and who would not. It's very indicative of, of success in countries where they have smaller homes. It uh, The it has an impact uh, and people are less likely to want to work from home. And there's also the, the uh, concern among young people that they're not getting the, the mentoring. They're not see working with uh, other people and, and having those elevator and hallway conversations. Uh, I have I talked to a New York Times reporter and, and she said, you know, I learned how to interview by sitting in the bullpen, li listening to other people interview. Younger people are also having a hard time, not just because of the space, um, but because they're, they're, they get a lot of their social interaction at work. So we need to be careful of the people that this isn't working for. In terms of connection and community, about three quarters uh, say that they feel the same or more connected than before the pandemic. But in another survey that we did, it became very apparent it's 
while we can do it, we like it better in person. So in terms of who wants to, uh, these numbers are from a study by the Becker Friedman Institute at the University of Chicago with over 15,000 respondents. It was done in December of uh, 2020. It's probably the most robust study out there, but I could tell you that the results are just about the same as all the other studies that I've read. And what we're seeing uh, is among those with compatible jobs, about 20 to, to uh, 25 percent say they want to go full time remote. Uh, about anywhere from five to 15 or 20 percent say they want to be fully in the office, and the balance want that middle ground, the hybrid, as as we've be, be, uh, begun calling it. Employees are lobbying for three to four days a week. Managers are lobbying for one to two days a week in the office. Uh, but the sweet spot seems to be at two and a half days a week. Our own prediction, um, we came out with this last April, and I, I, I still think that it's true. Uh, we used Bureau of Labor st Statistics data, went through uh, all of the, the job profiles in the U.S., and uh, assigned a, a value to you know, how many potentially what percentage could work from home. And so our prediction is by the end of next year, assuming that we're hopefully out of this uh, pandemic, uh, is that between 25 and 30% of people will work from home at least one day a week. If you um, if you haven't figured out what your your organization is going to do, if your organization hasn't figured it out, you're not alone. But I have to say that this is a huge stress. Uh, another study showed that companies that have been proactive about announcing their post pandemic plans are 88 percent more likely to say their overall well being. The employees say their overall overall well being has improved um, than the employees that have not shared their plans. It's just it's just a big level of stress. And some companies, uh, some of my clients are already losing people because they have not made the announcement. Okay, let's look at why. Well, I'd like to say that all three of these are uh, of equal concern. Um, they are not uh, this time around. Uh, the, the real driver is people. And I, I guess I like that better than, than doing it uh, as a way of saving money. Um, but I would like to see more concern about the planet uh, there as well. From an individual point of view, people are questioning the why of work. You know, it's, it's not until you get off that treadmill uh, that you start to realize just, just how difficult a time you were having. Um, the time to, to spend with your family at breakfast, uh, the time to, to uh, having the time to, to sleep more, to exercise more, not always running to jump on an airplane. It's, sometimes it takes getting out of that to realize just how stressful it was. And we need to do a better job of designing work around the employee why. I mean, we've known for decades that purpose and autonomy are, lead, are what lead to peak engagement and performance. That's what's going to attract and retain talent in the future and inspire people to do their best work. So we asked people why they wanna work from home. Um, there's been many surveys that have done this and this is kind of a composite of them. And these are the words they use. The blue ones are what Maslow would have called uh, hygiene needs. You, you have to get these right, um, but once once you're over them, it's not you're you're not going to be any happier at, at work to if they're exceptional if they're, if they're exceptionally comfortable, uh, or if the commute is exceptionally short. To really get to the the uh, peak engagement and well being, we really need to be focusing on these things in gold. So this is why people want to work from home. And then we also asked, you know, why do they want to come to the office? And again, these gold things are the things that we that, that lead to engagement and well-being, and we really need to focus on um, merging the two, work from home, that hybrid model, uh, so that people are getting what they need at both places. It's also going to be important when people come back to the office that they get what they're looking for, uh, that the, the, the place is conducive to these kinds of activities. Okay, next I want to talk about when. Most organizations are focused on the why right now, and they should be. Uh, but as long as I've been researching this, it's, people have been more um, 
uh, it's been more important to people to have time flexibility than it has been to have flexibility in place. They want to earn a living and have a life. The greater mobility and globalization, I think we're going to see an end to the nine to five mentality. Uh, rather than a marathon, we'll work in sprints. And that's the way we work better. Days will become less linear. linear. Um, and we'll work in ways that, that are better for our body clocks. We can work around the needs of our families, our personal prefer preferences, and uh, across a global economy. The office space is also going to change um, uh, as a, in terms of the wear of work. In uh, March of uh, this year, PwC did another study that should, said 5% of people have relocated more than 40 miles from the office permanently, and another 7% want to. I, I said 40 miles, it's 50 miles. So people are already on the move. They're already rethinking the wear of work. And all of our clients and much of the research that I've done shows that the office is going to be a different place. Uh, for many years, we've been reducing uh, costs through densification. But again, the focus now is on people and employers are genuinely looking to create an environment that helps people do their best work. Uh, what I'm seeing is a trend away from, or it, a, an acceleration of the trend away from assigned seats to activity-based uh, working uh, arrangements, where the emphasis is on movement between places and spaces. Uh, since we don't do the same thing all day, we need different places of work. This is where companies say they're going to spend money over the next year. And I think it's, it speaks to the normalization and the focus on remote and hybrid work. Again, PwC uh, found that over 60% of executives expect to raise uh, spending on virtual collaboration tools, manage, manager training, and about half plan to invest in areas that support hybrid working models, including hoteling apps and uh, adding communal space at the office. We're seeing the same thing. We're going from uh, an environment of largely individual space, you know, maybe uh, 80 or 70% or 80% individual space and to a flip-flop uh, at 70 to 80% collaborative and social space. As we think about the wear of work, uh, this, this issue raises its ugly head, location-based pay. And there's been a lot of talk in the news. I just read a, a survey by salary.com of 750 employers that said, uh, exist, that the companies are saying that they won't uh, adjust pay for existing employees who, who move somewhere else, but they are going to consider it with new hires. I have to say this doesn't hang with what I'm seeing in the market. Big companies like uh, Facebook and Twitter and others have said that they are going to use location-based pay. So stay tuned on this one. We're also hearing a lot and have been hearing a lot about working anywhere. Um, a PwC study uh, in 2021 half of, said half of uh, Gen Z and Gen X say they would give up at least 10% of salary to work any here, anywhere. But I have to tell you, it's kind of a rat's nest. There are tax laws, workers' comp rules, labor laws, uh, intellectual property rights, em uh, employee contracts that um, all come into play when you start working across state lines or, or even more so across country lines and even within city uh, from uh, in and outside the city. We've got a 20 page white paper that's coming out shortly that's going to address this. The address is at the bottom there. How of work is or should be changing probably more significantly than anything else if we really hope to maximize the potential of new ways of working. Imagine if when we had cell phones, we only used them to uh, make phone calls while we were at the house. <laughs> or if when we came up with smartphones, we only used them to make phone calls. Well, in many ways, that's what organizations are doing right now with remote work. We're using old practices to support new ways of working. And part of the frustration that people are feeling, the 12 hour days, the constant stream of Zoom meetings, thousands of unread email uh, messages are because of those old practices and processes. We need new team norms we, that help people understand it's okay not to answer the boss's email at three in the morning. It's okay to take a break after a big project. It's okay to take a nap. Uh, these are things that, that all have to be worked out between uh, teams uh, and, and to some extent uh, throughout the company. But I have to say, it drives me crazy when people talk about replicating the water cooler. 
I think we need to look at our look at all of our practices and processes with with a fresh eyes and an open mind. Who's the, the, the water cooler wasn't very inclusive. The only people that that knew what was going on there were the people that were standing there. Uh, my husband has a line that I like. Uh, sometimes we try harder and harder to get better and better at something we shouldn't be doing at all. I mean, meetings they weren't effective before the pandemic. Uh, having spaces of work where people had to have wear headsets to concentrate that wasn't very effective. Um, the internet going out, technology problems, onboarding. You know, people talk about how how difficult it is to onboard new employees in the virtual uh, world. Well, excuse me. 60% of people quit in the first two years and the majority of them quit in the first year. I don't think we were doing a very good job of onboarding before the pandemic. Organizations are ready for change like I have never seen before. So we really need to seize this opportunity to make work better for people, planet and profit. Thank you. <laughs>